welcome to Little Bobbin's Knits. My name's Danny, and just down here is Bobbin. I wonder if you can see him. There's Bobbin. He's seeming very, very old nowadays. Lovely little boy, but he's plugging along. And you can find me as Little Bobbins on Instagram and Ravelry. And it's really lovely to see you today. I'd hoped to do Vlogmas, but it just didn't work out for me this year. And so I'm really excited to be here chatting with you about my recent projects and my Christmas pattern, which will be coming out tomorrow, I think. Or maybe today, I'm not sure. It's the 19th of December today, and I usually would like my pat Christmas pattern to come out a little bit earlier, but it just didn't work out and I had a really challenging month last month which just set everything back well and the start of this month a lot so just the fact that I'm getting a Christmas pattern out I am grateful for so yes I'm going to show you that as well today so yeah let me have a sip of my tea I've got Fairy Tale of New York from Bird and Blend I uh, organised the tea cupboard and found that one and it was a very happy surprise. So yeah, I've got some knitting, crochet, yarn to share with you. But first I think I'm going to share my Christmas pattern because I'm so, so excited and so thrilled to be releasing it. So, it's based on this book. I think this is my third pattern based on this series of books, the Biscuit Buttons and Pickles books by E.J. Taylor. These are books that I read when I was a child. I don't know when this one was released. 1991. Um, and I just really love these books. I had ragdolls, or still have ragdolls of the characters, Violet Pickles and Ruby Buttons. And I came out with the Ivy Cottage socks, which are the first ones inspired by this series of books. And the Goose Eggs Quilt, they were both of the patterns that are inspired by this series. So in this one, Christmas at Ivy Cottage, Violet, who is one of the main characters, one of the ragdolls, has an angel costume and she really wants to be the angel in the school Christmas play, but Annie is chosen to be the angel. And Violet feels a little bit sad, but they're kind ragdolls and because Annie and her family don't have very much, Violet lets her wear her very special angel costume and I really liked the I really love the story but I really like the principle of that sharing with those who have less than us so yes this is Annie in the angel costume where's Violet Oh, Violet's back here. I think she's a shepherd. It's just such a lovely story. But yes, that inspired my pattern. So these are called the Violet's Angel Costume Socks. And they look like this. So I... I wanted to do a flap again. I did last year and I just think it's so pretty and it just adds a little special something to your Christmas socks. Not that they have to be worn at Christmas but to the Christmas pattern. I just really like that uh, feature right now and it's got a little rib underneath there and I wanted the, the cuff to represent the wings, the feathers on the angel wings. 
and the main body of the sock, I wonder if there's an angle, has just got this lovely delicate texture pattern and that symbolises for me the stars that are all over the dress. And I don't know if you can see in this light, but the yarn is sparkly, this pink yarn is sparkly. This is Beehive Yarns, this is the Naker colourway in the Barbarella base, so it has gold sparkle and it just is perfect for my vision for these socks. And the cuff, I didn't want to be sparkly, I just wanted that to be plain. And that is Crema, Crema, uh, also from Beehive Yarns in her Audrey base. And I love Beehive Yarns, that I just think that they're absolutely beautiful and Beth does just such a beautiful job on the dyeing of them. Her colours are just wonderful. This isn't the first, the only beehive yarns you'll see today. But yeah, they're the, uh, the Christmas pattern. And I'm so, so pleased with them. I wanted to do another short sock because I just really like wearing short socks at the moment. And I just thought they'd be really cute poking over the top of boots or well let's face it in trainers because I usually am wearing trainers <laughs> but yeah I'm so thrilled with them so they're finished and they will be out probably when this video is out they will already be out so they're Violet's Angel costume socks and I was so pleased to be able to end the year with a pattern inspired by these books because they're really special and time has no meaning for me anymore but I think the only patterns that I've released this year were inspired by this series but don't hold me to that because time just is a blur. I just don't even understand it any longer. So, yeah, I love the illustrations in these books. They're so lovely. And it feels quite surreal getting these socks finally out and talking to you about them because at so many points in the last couple of months I was absolutely convinced that they would not make it out, um, certainly this year. So I'm really thrilled. They follow the same sort of um, idea of my Christmas Eve um, patterns or my Christmas patterns in that I want them to be really enjoyable and simple to work. I want them to be ones that you can knit on while you are like visiting or watching something great or just relaxing with a snowball. <laughs> Whatever it is you like to do at this time, I just want them to be really pleasant ones. I do with all of my patterns, but particularly the Christmas patterns, I want the more challenging stuff, not that this is challenging, it's very simple lace, and I want that to be at the start, and then I want it just to be really relaxing throughout the rest because um, that's how my Christmases work. I have a bit more time at the start and then just have to fit in the rest around other things and busyness. And I want it to be something that I can remember and something that I don't have to think too much about. I can just enjoy. And yeah, these fit the bill for that and I just love this yarn the more I look at it the more sparkles I can see I wish that you could see the sparkles because I just think the gold sparkle is so special and it really sort of brings out these this texture pattern as sparkly stars which is what I hoped so yes they're my Christmas pattern I'm so happy to have them out and be able to share them with you. This is the pink yarn. I wonder if you can catch any sparkles there. 
I used 50 grams for mine, actually about 46 grams for mine, so I get to make another pair out of the leftovers, which is really exciting. And the cuff takes, I think I, mine was about 11 grams, so yeah, a 20 gram mini will be plenty to do the cuff. So yes, that's them. Very excited and feel very rusty talking about knitting and patterns. <laughs> So let's move on to some other things that I've been working on. Hmm, how shall I do it? In well, chronological order isn't going to work because I have no recollection of the order of things. I'll just grab things and see what I grab. This is something that I finished yesterday and I don't have the thing but I took a bit of video so I'll insert that. I wasn't sure what to get a friend of mine for Christmas and if I'm not sure I'll probably knit something for certain people because I don't know I hope they know because it's only for certain people I hope they know that the thing whatever I've made is made with lots of love and you can sort of match things to people better can't you because it's completely bespoke so I thought because it was quite a last minute decision I would make her a headband because or ear warmer you know woolly uh, headband because she wears them I believe and I thought it would be a really quick project, which it was. I started it about four o'clock yesterday and sewed it up today. Really quick and I want to knit more because it was so much fun. I wonder what the pattern was. Let me have a look. So I'll insert a bit of video now about what... My phone has died so that's not going to help me find anything out. Um, I'll put the pattern on the screen so that you can see the name of it. It's, I think, like the first pattern that comes up if you um, look at the categories in Ravelry and you put headband. I think it's the first one that comes up. It's a lovely sort of squishy fisherman's rib type headband. And I use this Kid Silk Hay, no. Kid Silk Classic. I don't know what colour it was. I have the ball band in my pocket. Uh, 894. So I don't know what colour name that is. But it's sort of a purpley, sort of a whiny colour. And it was really lovely to work with. It made the stitches even squishier because it's so light and airy. It's lamb's wool and kid mohair and polyamide. We went into the yarn shop yesterday to find yarn for this. I probably have some in my stash, but I think it was in the last video I mentioned that we were having some work done at our house and so everything was in chaos. That work was never finished and we've had drama after drama with the people trying to, all the people who were supposed to be doing that work and as it is, they are no longer um, doing work for us but our house is still in chaos. <laughs> so I think we have a plan to get it all sorted out now but it's been like five months of clothes in bags and stuff chucked in my studio so I can't get to stash at the moment so I thought okay time is of the essence here I need to go to the yarn shop and my son picked out the colour 
I said, what do you think that this person would like? And he picked this one and I think it's the perfect choice for her. So yes, I'd like to knit some more of those I think. Um, they're a perfect little gift because they're so quick and they're not too sort of size dependent. Um, they're quite sort of standard size. So that's the most recent thing I made. The next most recent thing I made was a replacement for this hat. This hat doesn't fit him anymore. And so I made a replacement one out of some lovely, like, marmalade tweed. And it was really nice and fit him perfectly because I, I must get better at taking notes. I know which pattern this was. I think it was the deer hood. So I knew where to find this pattern. I'd used some lovely yarn for this. This was Uncommon Thread, some sort of cashmerino worsted. Really lovely, perfect for this hat because it's so soft. So yes, I knew the pattern, but I had no idea what size I had made. So I ended up measuring his head and making the one that relates to that, which doesn't seem like a novel concept, does it? But it's not something that I would usually do. I would just guess. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But I measured his head and ended up making the largest size. And it was a good size, but a little bit loose. I think next time I'd go down, this is why these videos are really useful actually, because I won't write it down, but I could look on here and then I might remember. I would go down a needle size, I think. I think you use a 4.5 and I think, or I used a four and I'd use the, see, I can't even remember and I only just made this. Um, I'd use a smaller needle because it was a little bit area than I think it needs to be and a little bit big a little bit bigger than it needs to be so I ended up soaking it and trying to get out as much of the water as possible and then I put it in the tumble dryer for a while and after that it was perfect it was really lovely stitch definition like it sort of squished up a little bit but it was super washed so it hadn't felted completely and it just poured it all in a little bit and was just right but I think next time I do the size down on smaller needles or with a thicker yarn and actually I was um, umming and ahhing between the two of these when I actually cast on that tweedy one he chose ultimately but yeah I think we've lost that one already unfortunately so I might make another one with this. This is Skeen Queen yarn. I think I got from a local shop and it's called Antique Map and it's really nice. Um, such a shame to have lost. I think that's my first uh, knitwear casualty. I don't think I've ever lost anything before. Oh here's the yarn that I used. Such a nice colour. I can't remember where this was from, but it was really, really lovely. So, we went to Waddiston Manor last week to see the Christmas lights, and the light walk was lovely, and it was really, really fun. We'd not been before, so it was really fun to go, but I think that's where we lost it. I think at some point we took it off, and we didn't put it in a pocket, or it might have been in a pocket, and fallen out. Never mind. Let me go on to the next thing. So, oh, I'm wearing my binunculus jumper. Um, a little while ago, Amy from uh, Little Tailoress and Dandelion and Dogwood asked for test knitters for her new jumper design, the Maybury sweater and the picture she showed I was smitten so I asked if I could test for her and um, she was looking for people to test 
my size so she said yes and so I did and this jumper is such a fascinating construction now I haven't blocked it yet I got it knit in time but I didn't get it blocked in time because my uh, just had a really terrible month um and I let Amy know and she was absolutely fine about it kindly so I need to block it but it's such a fascinating construction because you construct it in quadrants and then you sort of <laughs> it's quite difficult to explain actually but I think this is the one that I did first and it means you can play around with colour and you can play around with stripes you don't have to do as you can see I didn't do the stripes on the other side and the op the options are absolutely endless with this jumper I just it's definitely not going to be my last one so I decided to do this sort of camel colour with a stripe of this purple and I did it there and again on the opposite side at the back it's very simple very enjoyable I would highly recommend Amy's done hers well she's doing one now with her advent calendar so with held with um, Suri and it just looks so lovely all of the other testers they just made really beautiful versions and all so different it it's just that sort of pattern where your imagination can go wild and I really loved it so I'm interested to see how it's going to fit me because I don't know if I did the right length or anything I did measure it to a um, jumper that I've got and that I like the fit of but you just can't properly tell can you until it's blocked so I'm going to do that as soon as I can find a bit of space and see what it looks like but I love it and I would highly recommend the pattern it was so enjoyable to do um, it was so enjoyable in fact that I have started another one so I wanted to do one where all the quadrants were different colours and I'm not sure what I'll do on the sleeves yet, I don't know if they'll need um, separate schemes or whether I'll be able to get them out of one, so not certain about that. But I think it was two years ago I did, I think it was called the Crystal Visions Yarn Club with Beehive Yarns. I got all of these beautiful schemes, I did the whole year so I got 12 beautiful schemes but I really am so tempted, oh this one's attached, when I have really beautiful yarn to not use it, to save it, just in case the thing doesn't turn out how I want or many many just in cases and I just decided I can't keep doing that. <laughs> because then I just end up with lots of yarn that I feel like is too special to use and then what do I use? With this one I use King Cole, I think it's Luxury DK. It's just a wool. Let me see if there's some in here. Um, ah, oh it's Merino Blend DK. It's anti tickle super wash. And it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It will do the job. Um, it says it's anti tickle, but it's not that soft. It's fine though. I still have all of that left from the purple that I used for the stripes. It's fine yarn, I've used it on a jumper for my son because it washes well and it isn't too expensive but it's not like, it's not my favourite 
it's it's fine and I think fine is the best I can say about it really it's fine it's adequate I think if you I used it on another jumper I think where I held it double with Suri and that makes it nicer because it adds that sort of little layer of softness but it's fine what I wanted to do was make a functional jumper that I could wear and wash and be easy and that I believe is what it will be but yes I've started another one in Suri and the schemes from the Crystal Visions Yarn Club. So I started with this one and I've got a blue and a purple, a yellow. I thought those four would be the quadrants. And then I've got this green and the, this will be the sleeves or one of the sleeves. And if it's only one, then I need to pick another for the other sleeve but yeah you do a sort of edge treatment and then the other side is worked onto this edge as you go and then you seam up the sides such a genius pattern I did when um, I messaged Amy to ask if I could do the test knit, I said, but it isn't in Tasha, is it? Because I just don't have the brain power or the patience or the dexterity to mess with lots of balls of yarn. But it's not. It's, it's so simple and so clever. And I love it. And I bet even when I finish this one, it won't be my last. Because it's just allows you to play and that's the most fun isn't it another jumper I've been working on I got this yarn my lovely Alex Collins designs bag um, I got this yarn at Fiber East in the summer I started knitting a stripes jumper by Andrew Mowry and I've sort of stalled on it because, and this is such a silly reason, because I don't think it's going to look great. But I don't know that until I've blocked it. It's a single ply yarn and it's Edelweiss yarns. And unfortunately, I think she's now closed up shop. But the dye a bit behind Edelweiss yarns had a sample on her stand. And samples on stands at shows are brilliant because I often don't go there with an idea of what I want to make. But I usually like to get the yarn to make a jumper. So seeing those samples really helps me make a decision. I don't really go with an idea of something to make because I really don't need more yarn. But when I see the samples, it makes me want to knit the thing so yeah I'm in full support of samples for yarn shows I think it's really worthwhile but she had one the colors were slightly different but only very slightly I think there was one I couldn't match and I mostly just used the colors that she had available at the show I can't remember which ones she used in hers but yeah, it's lovely yarn. I was interested in the base. I think there's some linen in it. But obviously, you can't get it now because she's closed up shop and I can't find a ball band. So, no good whatsoever. But you can see in this blue, you see the white bits. I think they're the linen. Is it linen or is it viscose? Anyway, it's some sort of plant fibre that is also in this yarn. And I just thought that was a really interesting blend. And I liked her happy colours. So I thought I would give it a go. 
I'm not sure if I've stopped it too short. I wear, I measured it against a jumper because I wear more cropped jumpers, but I don't know if it's a little bit too cropped, but it's single ply, so it will grow. And that is what I will have to check when I block it. So I need to carry on because I could be wearing this and I could be loving it, but I've just stopped because I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Just doesn't make sense. Just finish the thing and then see how you feel. It's got a folded collar, which I really like actually. I'm just on sleeve one and the sleeves, I don't think I'm doing any decreases. I'm not sure what's in the pattern, but I'm gonna do balloony sleeves like this because it means that I can do them on this circular needle and I don't have to use DPNs or magic loop which makes sleeves much less painful for me because they're not my favourite. I used the jogless stripe method which is explained in the pattern and I think that's given a really good effect can't really see where the stripes begin and end. I think, I think I've sewn in some ends as well. I haven't snipped them off. Have I sewn in any end? I think I'm lying to myself. I don't think I've sewn in any. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> but never mind. Um, I was considering weaving them in as I go, but I just like to do the final tweaks of trying to make those stripes jobless and that's just so much easier when you've got the end to sew in because you can ease the yarn along and I just think it's neater for me. So, yeah. I must finish it, mustn't I? Could be my new favourite jumper, but I'll never know until I finish it. And I think I got my bag at Vibrist as well. I have many Alex Collins Designs bags. They are probably my favourite. And I didn't have one in this shape. So decided to get one of those. So as I mentioned, I had a really quite stressful time, um, end of October, November, start of December, and I really noticed something about my making and mental health. So when I'm fine, I'll knit. When I'm a little bit Mm, not so fine. On it washcloths. <laughs> when I'm a little bit less fine than that, I'll crochet. When I'm not great, I'll crochet washcloths <laughs> and buy cotton. And when I'm really not great, I just read and don't do any making whatsoever. So I've read a lot of books over the last few weeks but in that time because these things go in waves certainly for me I made some I knitted some dishcloths this one I think I probably started the last time I spoke to you all the time before but I finished that and I absolutely love it it's been used and washed many times so this is a pearl soho pattern I think it's the farmhouse dish towel or something like that and I love the stitch pattern. I think it's such a great versatile one because it's completely reversible. The only thing I didn't like was I could not work out. I did the edges to the pattern and I could not work out how to get neat edges when you do the colour work section. Just don't like how that looks at all. And I mean, it's a tea towel. Well, we dry our hands on it in the kitchen. It's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect but I just don't like that edge so I'm knitting another one now and trying a different edging or trying a different 
way of working the stitches at the edges. I don't know if that's going to work either. But see, one side is quite neat, but the other side isn't. And I don't know if that's user error or just one of those things. See, that's not too bad. But the other side is. So, yeah, I'm going to have another go and see how it works out this time. This yarn, the cream, is just cotton that I got on a cone and very basic and it does the job. And the red is Stylecraft Naturals, I think. It's organic cotton and it only uses a fraction. For that pattern so yeah I knitted that one and then oh what have I got in here oh this is the creamer this is the contrast cuff color for violets angel costume socks such a beautiful color and so yes then I got into the phase of crochet this cloth and heavily into the buying cotton for dish cloths. So my acorn is absolutely full of cotton and it doesn't actually fit it all in. I got some different colours of the Stylecraft, ah this is what it was, Stylecraft Natural Organic Cotton. Which is nice, I like it. I hoard that as well a bit, which is silly because if I use it I can just get some more. It just looks so pretty. And then I start I also got these. I wonder if there'll just be loads of glare. These are the Rico Rumi Spin Spin DK. I think they're 50 gram. Yeah, they're 50 grams. That's easier to see, isn't it? But I thought they'd be pretty fun for what I was doing because the work is done in the um, ball. Sometimes I'll make crochet dishcloths when I'm fine and happy, but I have noticed that it's something that I sort of start doing if I'm not feeling great. I'd be really interested. Do you notice similar um, things with your crafting and happiness levels. You're right, Bobby stuff. There you go. But looking at these now, I really want to work on them and I'm feeling very happy at the moment. So yeah, it doesn't always follow. But look at these colours. Aren't they fun? I love that one too. I decided to get a like mixed pack because I couldn't decide which ones I liked. So I thought this would be a good way to try them out. This one is very Christmassy. I don't think that, I don't know if they're called names, but that's a very Christmassy one. So I wanted to get that. And I've, I got an extra one of those, so I've made up a Christmas dish well and I'm just crocheting corner to corner and that's why I thought that those balls would be really fun because it's interesting to see the colours change. I also have been using the little tiny Rico Rumi balls to do other corner to corner ones, these tiny ones. So I went through and I picked out a mottled one and a coordinating solid. I've given some of these away as presents so I don't have a lot of the colours that I used but I did half in the mottled and half in the solid and that's fit, that, well, yeah that's 50 grams so that's one ball of that and one ball of that and this one was just a 
practice to try and work out what I was doing because I saw a dishcloth in a shop in town it's a crochet one and was trying to work out what the stitch pattern was and then I figured out that it was corner to corner but it was done at a lighter gauge so it looked really pretty and delicate these are a bit more sort of functional and work horsey but I really like them and they will do the job so I've got another one here which I've started and it's such a fun um, stitch pattern corner to corner it's really simple and relaxing and I just love how all the different colours look together this one's quite dark but I've had to throw away quite a lot of knitted dishcloths because they just have been used so much that they've got because and so I wanted to replenish my stock and I thought I'd try a bunch of these because they're just really fun and I like being able to use the different colours but yeah I've got lots of different colours to try in here this is going to be a pretty combo the pink and pink mottled so yes always learning always learning about my brain <laughs> and what it's up to but yeah I haven't worked on those for a little while because I'm feeling thin <laughs> My last product to share are some stripy socks. So these I've just been working on when I've um, been driving or at the cinema or something like that. Look at these colours. This is... Just leaves me speechless. I love this yarn. This is Tiny Human Knits. And... The colours are just so beautiful, it's an absolute pleasure to work on. So I've got those on the needles. I started those toe up, as I tend to, if I've got... This was a 50 gram skein, so if I've got a 50 gram skein, I'll start from the toe up so that I can use up as much of the yarn as possible. And I've got a short row heel in there. I can't remember what this yarn is, but it's quite a robust one, so I think it will be good for not reinforced heels and I absolutely love those I I'm not sure how much more I've got left of that ball oh quite a bit oh no that's the other ball yes this is why this one's paused because I think I've only got a couple more stripes left and then it will be the rib so I've not wanted to take it to the cinema in case I just knit to the end <laughs> so then I needed to um, cast on another pair not the other sock to match that one another pair <laughs> and this is also tiny human knits and you can't really see yet but look at that oh it's so pretty there's something so fun and joyful about self-striping yarn so lovely and I started that toe up as well and then I felt guilty I haven't made anything for David for Christmas and I'd really like to make something for him for Christmas so I thought okay I'll try and knit David some socks I'm really enjoying the self-striping ones coming along with me whenever I'm out and about so maybe I should do some for him and then I found some in if you've watched this podcast for a long time you would have seen these before I found some in my basket of works in progress that I started in 2016 I think I was going to make them either for his birthday or Christmas in 2016 and I thought perhaps I should try and finish those for Christmas. He doesn't mind, he feels no sense of ownership towards my hobby, he doesn't, he is just glad if he gets something that's knitted doesn't um, like 
back request it or demand it in any way. So this is all about me thinking that I should make him something. Have I dropped a stitch there? Oh no, I don't think I have. I hope not, because if I have to rip these back, it will take another seven years to get them to where I want them to be. I don't think I have, thank goodness. But um, yes, I started these in 2016. So I thought I would try and finish them. I don't know if it's gonna happen. <laughs> I've got this one to here with a heel, which I don't like. I don't like, I thought I'd try this in the short row um, heel, but I don't like it. And now I'm thinking I maybe should rip it back to above the heel. But that's not gonna get them finished, is it? And then the other one, it's only this long. not going to happen is it I really should just stop <laughs> okay what would I be knitting on if I wasn't working on this I'd knit another hat for my son out of this which I think is probably what I'm going to do because these are just not going to happen are they I don't know why do you have projects like that where They've been works in progress for ages, but they just never quite make it to being a finished object. I think I've taken the needles off of these to use for other projects so many times. I don't know why they're just not working for me. But yeah, now I'm chatting about it, I just think it's not going to happen. Maybe I need to just start afresh, leave these ones and start him a new pair. Is that good logic? That means it's even less likely to happen by Christmas, but what if I finish them? What are your thoughts? I'd be interested. Do I push through, persevere with these and try and get them done? Even though it's just not just not working for me right now. We went to see Polar Express at the cinema um, yesterday. We were the only ones in the screen, which was just so exciting. So, I don't know if you've seen Polar Express, but there's a bit where um, the hot chocolate comes out and it's all a bit musical and dancey. So he was dancing away in the aisles and I wished I could have videoed it because it was just the loveliest thing I've ever seen. But yeah, this was Polar Express and I got one and a bit stripes done. No, I'm fighting a losing battle here. These are not gonna happen. Okay, I need to just, I need to just be fine with that. <laughs> so yeah, I think what I'm gonna have to do is find some yarn, but I really want to make him some socks in. And I really like this yarn. This was a um, British Bee Knits Buffy inspired yarn. And I love it, and I think the colours are great, but it's just not happening for me, and I don't know why. I don't like this heel. I'm going to have to rip that out. Yeah, I'm going to have to rip that out, because I just don't like it. It interrupts the stripe and just feels jarring. What do you think? Anyway, I think that is all of my projects, all of the various bits that I've been working on. And I got to introduce you to my Christmas pattern, which I'm so thrilled about. So if you like them and would go and like to go and have a look, I'll put links in the description box. Violet's angel costume socks. And I hope that you'll join in with the Christmas Eve cast on. Um, yeah, it's a lovely tradition that I'm so pleased to be a part of. But anyway, thank you so much for being here with me today. I 
have really enjoyed chatting with you even though I felt completely rusty. Um, I hope you're well and I hope you're having a lovely December. Just looking outside. I might take a little bit of video of outside now. It is the greyest, <laughs> drizzliest day out there. I'm very happy to be inside. But yeah, I hope to see you very soon. Bye. Thank you.